Good evening. The government is going to ask Parliament to amend the existing Prevention of Corruption Act 1988. The ostensible reason? Well, the government is seeking to give immunity to officials from prosecution for their policy decisions that they would have taken even after retirement. The amendment, which is likely to be placed before the cabinet this week, will make it mandatory for investigating agencies like the CBI to get prior permission of the government to act against retired officers, officers, I beg your pardon, of the rank of joint secretary and above. But at the same time, the amendment also says if the charges are proved, then the wealth gained through corrupt practices will be confiscated. The note has been prepared by the Department of Personnel and Training. The amendment proposal is being seen as a very significant one, given the fact that an unusually large number of projects are now held up and are hurting the economy, or as the government claims, and as the government feels that senior officials are increasingly feeling retribution after retirement. Under the Prevention of Corruption Act, officers of the rank of Joint Secretary and above can be charged cheated for acts of commission and omission only when they are in service. But of late, the demand to charge sheet officers post-retirement too has acquired momentum. Tonight on The Big Picture, we discuss the proposal, the rationale behind it, and whether passing such an amendment will actually speed up the process of getting stalled projects cleared, hence doing its bit to infuse some life in the lackluster performance of our economy. Joining me tonight is TSR Subramanian Palmer, Cabinet Secretary. Many thanks sir, for joining us. Priyaranjan Dash, Managing Editor, Financial Chronicle is with me as well. Nalin Kohli, Leader BJP will also join us on the program and Beshna Parida, MP from the Biju Janata Dal will also be joining us on the big picture tonight. Welcome all of you gentlemen. Uh, I would like to start with the ex-bureaucrat on the panel. Mr. Subramanian, do you first of all buy the argument that serving bureaucrats, serving babus who have a lifetime of service behind them are purposely sitting on files, fearing retribution after they retire. I mean, if you, if you were still serving, would you even consider not doing something or taking a decision that might be deemed wrong by someone else five years after you retire? Well, I think the system provides enough safeguards for people to uh, exercise the discretion, judgment and uh, to move forward. Uh, I think we cannot have a single point definition as to why files get delayed or decisions get delayed. There are all kinds of complex issues, including political interest, including money to be made on in contracts, including intervention by vested interests. There are so many issues. This is not the only issue to concentrate on. Mm. The fact is decisions do get delayed. We are now focused, linking the two separate issues. I'm not sure this particular proposal is going to make a difference one way or the other. Mm. Why uh, do you say that? Uh, the, the reason I'm saying that is, uh, uh, I may be a view of one, there is a certain purpose to the single directive, which is the prior permission for JS level officers, uh, uh, registration of investi investigation uh, 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 on policy matters. My impression has been that does not apply to disproportionate assets matter. Mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the case of dis disproportionate assets, I think investigation should be without letter of hindrance. The moment any information comes to investigating agency, on that there is no question. But on the policy issue, there is a grave danger of uh, uh, false investigations being started. If you don't play ball with a minister or somebody, some one letter, anonymous letter can be taken cognizance of, mm. inquiry can be started, it can be arrested. The answer is, uh, so ultimately, unfortunately, uh, approvals have rarely been given in the past by experience. Mm. Mm. The solution is different. The solution is not to throw the baby with the bathwater. This is a necessary safeguard for senior officials, supposing somebody declares war, say, with Pakistan or China, say. Can he be pilloried 10 years later for taking the wrong decision? If it goes wrong, etc. So it's a double-edged sword that you're et et but, but, the, but then, the solution is that th we need to have a system by which within two months, the approval for the prosecution is given. If it is not given, it should be a speaking order. And if within two months or three months, the approval is not given, it is taken as granted. Right. In other words, don't throw the, don't throw the baby with the bathwater. I am not, I, I'm not including corruption cases there. Corruption cases should I, I not require point. any approval from anybody. I get your point. I want to come back to the second guest in the studio. But before that, I want to get a political view on this. The Nalin Kohli of the BJP has joined us. Nalin, good to talk to you after a long time. Uh, you heard what Mr. Subraman Manyam had to say. He's not including corruption or corrupt practices in that particular thing. He says, do not throw out the baby with the bathwater. What is your view on this? Being a political man, being a politician, how do you see this proposal? 
Well, Athar, it's good to be back again after a long time indeed. But uh, let me just come back to the topic. First and foremost, uh, whatever be uh, any change in any law, it's finally for Parliament and let the final proposal come. And obviously, our political party would look at it. And there would be, you know, demerits and demerits to it. But looking at it, broadly speaking, still we don't know what exactly is there. My first point is, I think what we require is a system of honesty and transparency. If the government is simply saying that because of fear of taking decisions, bureaucracy is not functioning up to its optimum, then the question really arises that why has decision making slowed? If you are going to see corruption, scandal after scandal after scandal, misuse of rules, abuse of rules and systems to favor some of gigantic proportions as we saw in the 2G scam, now we are seeing in the Colgate scam, CWG, there's so many other scams then obviously there has to be prosecution and you have to catch it, the guilty. The point from the bureaucracy's perspective is you've got fixed tenure, you've got protection in some case, there is no requirement for any bureaucrat to do something incorrect if they perceive it to be there. On the other hand, what you need to have is reward for performance. Now that is coming, will can only happen through honesty and it can happen through transparency in the system. The last part is that how can you give blanket uh, uh, safeguards if a policy has been made with some kind of vested interest in mind, if a system has been compromised, whether it was done, a prosecution has taken place during the tenure of an officer concerned or after, the key issue is that the guilty should be punished. Right. One point that Mr. Subramaniam said, and I think we need to draw attention to that, what we require is time-bound investigations and we require time-bound framing of charges and dispersal of justice. Because without that, sometimes honest people get stuck in wrong charges Pointing and can sir. spend a lifetime there. Pointing, you raise a very important point and I want to touch upon that in just a bit, a little later in the show. Before that, I want to go to um, uh, Mr. Baishna Parida, before I come to Mr. Dash in the studio. Uh, sir, what is your opinion on this? You are also, of course, not part of the government. Uh, you're also slightly closer to the opposition. How do you see it as a parliamentarian? Uh, this proposal is going to go to the cabinet first, then they will finalize it, then it might land up in Parliament, but as of now, what are your views on such a proposal? You see, this is uh, very late. Uh, the government is thinking about this and the cabinet uh, is going to take some decision. You see, now the corruption has reached its highest point and it has spread it throughout uh, the society, in government, in uh, uh, the society, in political field and economy, everywhere the corruption has spread its, uh, uh, its, uh, 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 its tentacle. And uh, now the uh, country and its system, our democratic system is in danger. So the bureaucrats, like politicians, the bureaucrats, those uh, on dishonest politicians like this dishonest uh, officers, they are the part of this corruption. And uh, if an uh, officer uh, uh, is involved in some corruption or... Uh, uh, so are you for uh, this proposal or are you against this proposal? No, no, I am uh, in favor of this proposal, but uh, the proposals and the laws which we are making, it should be properly right. implemented. Right. That Point is taken. the problem. Point taken, and if, Huh. Point taken. I'll come back to you in just a bit. I want to come back to the second guest in my studio. Uh, Mr. Dash, uh, we were talking before the show as well and it does link itself to another story that came out today. Uh, but before we go to the CBI part of it, your views on the proposal, do you think it could perhaps become a double-edged sword and we perhaps might not be able to control it and perhaps honest officers who took bona fide decisions in good faith could also fall you know, under the net? Obnoxious and retrograde. That's, what, that's what you think of the proposal? Yes. Yes. Please, why? You, if you look at it, mm. you know, this is uh, the so-called single directive, which was struck down as null and void by Supreme Court in the Vinit Narayan mm. judgment. Now there, of course, we know that the CVC Act, when it came, you know, the final act when it came in 2003, mm. following the recommendation of the Sarat Power Committee, Joint uh, Parliamentary Committee, now, they, of course, reintroduced the single directive in, in the CVC Act. Mm. And so, Joint Secretary and EVERF officers have the protection 
from uh, investigation under the Prevention of Corruption Act. Mm. Only save in the case where an officer is found red-handed, caught Accepting uh, taking a bribe, money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in all other cases, CVI, which is supposed to be the investigating agency, before it initiates investigation, has to seek government's permission. Mm. Now that's ridiculous. If you if you look at the uh, you know the last year, January, when you had uh, Subramanian Swami's uh, petition before Supreme Court, mm. now there the Supreme Court said it's now part of you know earlier when it struck it down that was an executive order. Now it is a statutory thing. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court there of course said that okay, for prosecution, uh, three months is a reasonable time that that the authorities should take. And if the attorney general has to be consulted, another month can be given. Mm. In that case, in the case of Swami seeking permission for Raja's persecution, it was 16 months from the prime minister, which, uh, you know, Supreme right. Court adversely commented on. Right. Now, what I'm saying is, why I'm call calling it a retrograde slave, is that look at the Lokpal bill. In the Lokpal bill, this particular provision is being done away with. Hmm. When you have an independent ombudsman, to, uh, then you don't need the government to be given permission for uh, prosecuting its officials, hmm. Hmm. you know, of whatever rank. And would, would this not also and question... And if you look at, look at the, you know, the basic uh, law in this country, that is equality before law. Hmm. Now, in a corruption case, I fail to understand how is it that any officer will be uh, afraid of taking the right decision if he's not indulging in corruption. Mm. I don't think that for any of the project delays or the delays in decision making, this is a factor at all. I, I take your the point. The fear sir. of prosecution or investigation is not a factor mm. for an honest officer to delay any decision. Point in taken, fact, sir. I would argue mm. that the delay is caused, like Mr. Subramanian pointed out, one of the factor is you delay, deliberately delay a decision because so that you create case. an opportunity of for corruption. Gains. Uh, sir, you, your reaction very briefly, I will take a break after that. Uh, very briefly, I'm making a distinction here. Uh, on factual question, I'm not sure. I'm sure mm. Ms. Dash uh, does uh, enough research. I think pure 16A corruption cases, I don't think a prior approval is required. This is my impression. Mm. I mm. could be wrong. Right. But in all six, other cases, six of, uh, six, of, 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 of the, of the, the Delhi Police, police uh, Establishment, establishment yeah. Act. Yeah. My point is that for all policy decisions, like we have had, for example, in the 2G case, if, if it is a pure corruption case, my own view is there should be no quarters given immediately, register the case and proceed like for any citizen. But where a policy decision has been taken, we need an additional protection because India is not as simple a country as it is. The politics in the states are there. People work in with so many mafias in the districts. It's not a perfect democracy, yes. They work with mafias in the, in the state in the capitals. Some protection is required otherwise. This will be an additional weapon thrown, already character role entry, postings, transfers, or weapons. We are going to give one more weapon. All the other weapons are being sadly abused. This is one more weapon which is a very deadly weapon in their hands. I take your point, but sir. But that protection should be given with very severe safeguards. That within two months, if it is approval is not given, then you approval, drop it. Uh, no, uh, no, it is assumed that approval is given. Okay, I'll take a small break right now. I want to go back to Nalin Kohli and Mr. Uh, Bhaisna Parida as well from the BJP, uh, the BJD, I beg your pardon. Small break, come back, lots more to discuss on The Big Picture tonight. Welcome back to The Big Picture. Mr. Nalin Kohli is still with us. Sir, let's talk about the, BJP, uh, the CBI for a bit now. The CBI, according to this proposal, if and when it is passed, will need prior permission from the government to act or initiate action against retired officers. Now, uh, that some people would say is almost like a shield uh, uh, to people who actually use their position to undertake acts of commission, uh, uh, omission and commission for ill-gotten gains. Would you agree that it could perhaps be a shield to those people who are actually corrupt, actually take bribes, uh, and when they retire, they'll be protected? Well, I think, Arthur, primarily anything can be abused and anything can be misused. So, I mean, it's really in how the law is treated 
And what we are finding is a situation where unnecessarily the, the honest are being sidelined and brazen corruption and misuse of the systems and the structure for vested interests is being rewarded with brazenness and punity. So when the political leadership shows that kind of way and if it favors certain people, then obviously it creates a sense of uh, insecurity among those who are not interested in being you know, on the corrupt side or in taking uh, decisions based on vested interests. But simultaneously, so therefore, as I said in the beginning, we need to celebrate honesty and transparency. When you're talking about the CBI, I'd like to draw your attention to uh, the fact, in fact, Mr. Arun Jaitley, our leader of opposition, the Rajya Sabha has written an article on this also today, where he's pointed out that in the select committee on the Lokpal, certain recommendations were made by Mr. Jaitley and our other two uh, members also, in uh, Mr. Bhupendra Yadav and Ra Rajiv Rudi, that the CBI, how it could become credible in today's scenario and how it should go about prosecution. Those recommendations were diluted when the final report went from the select committee and the uh, cabinet in turn has diluted it even further with regard to say the Lokpal, the appointment of the CBI director, the independence, the prosecution wing, all of it. So therefore when there is an intent or, or rather when there is a lack of intent at the political level, it really does not really fall down to, you know, a law protecting the officers because at the end of the day, it's only probably going to unfortunately help those so the point i'm again repeating is honesty and transparency is the key and within a short time you have to try the guilty punish the guilty and that is the only reward that the honest will seek that's their best protection point taken i want to take it to your colleague uh, who is of course uh, also joined us from the bjd uh, uh, mr bashna parida uh, what, what are your views on it Should, in in case this proposal is passed mr subramaniam here in the studios thinks that if in within 2 months or 3 months uh, there is the permission is not really given you don't pursue the case but make it quick make it fast and make it swift no you see it depends upon the people who are in power so far this permission uh, is granted to prosecute an officer. It is, uh, uh, we have, from our experience, uh, we have seen so months together, <coughs> the prosecuting authorities, they don't get the permission from the higher authorities. So that delay is there. And now, you see, from the, uh, we have seen in the Colgate case, how the CBI was utilized by the authorities in power to change even uh, their report uh, uh, and which was submitted even uh, before the uh, Supreme Court. That is the case uh, now in uh, our country. So you're and saying... How and how can I, how can I believe this, uh, the, this government, those who are in power, they will uh, take the proper decision and allow the prosecuting authority to uh, reach the uh, 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 correct uh, uh, decision. So you're saying and the CBI. The truth. So you're saying, sir, the CBI could be used as a weapon uh, if they don't play. If someone doesn't really play ball and does something against the government of the day, it could be used as a weapon. I take your point, sir. I want to go back. I want to go back to Mr. Dash right now uh, in the studio from the economy perspective. The, the rationale that the government is really giving is that these uh, uh, these babus these serving babus, these, this, this, this carder, they're really sitting on big infra projects, some of them, and that's hurting the economy. Do you buy that argument? See, we are yet to come across a case where because of the fear of uh, getting investigated under the Prevention of Corruption Act, a government official any, has done any, any, yeah. any, any project, infrastructure project or other thing, has been delayed. Mm. In fact, if you look at it, you know, the common uh, example that is that is discussed is the delay in defense procurement, for instance. You know, and uh, it said that since the Bofa scandal, 80, um, 87, we haven't had, we haven't procured another gun mm. because, because people are afraid to take decisions. No, that's not true. Just look at the Augusta Westland deal. Yeah. It took more than 10 years for, for a decision to be made from 99 to 2010 when the order was uh, decided. Mm. Now, despite the delay of 10 years, we still have a corruption case there coming up. So, you know, I, insofar as the economy is concerned, in fact, corruption in India is a major economic setback. Mm. Unless we address that and 
these kind of proposals which are being now mooted by uh, you know the department of personnel this is going to be a serious severe setback to the fight against corruption mm. and therefore it will be a setback to the economic uh, growth of this country so in that way it's to investors confidence because we are known as a corrupt place mm. in so far as anybody coming up with any invest uh, this thing is concerned mm. and if with this kind of protection available to to officials for mm. uh, indulging in corrupt activities and yet not getting the permission right or not uh, not uh, getting get, getting the permission from the government right. to be prosecuted right this is this is going to lower the confidence right and that way it is linked to the economy uh, before i come to you mr subramanian i think nalin kohli wants to yeah. wants to give in the point yes nalin briefly please very briefly other i think we need to be clear just because the government is not performing does not mean you need protection for the bureaucrats and one example is national uh, the uh, transport ministry under the nda could do uh, 12 13 kilometers a day which has come down to 2 3 kilometers that does not have to do with government decision it, it does not have to do with protection of bureaucrats it's about functioning of the government and second point is it's not convenient to pick up you know the policy paralysis statement and put it on the doorstep of the bureaucracy if there are intersenine wars between ministry to ministry that does not again have to do with bureaucrats i think political leadership has its role and if the political leadership walks away from that accountability and responsibility you don't need a law for protection of bureaucrats for them to start working uh, mr suramani would you agree is is the political leadership yes. trying to shrug it off shrug ultimately, off responsibility ultimately ultimately a company performs as well as the managing director makes it perform mm. <clears throat> on that there's no question at all three four very very short point mr suri is perfectly correct a system is as good as the people who administrate at the top and a lot of the failure has to be placed at the people in charge now one hour back uh, the present director cbi in a in a press conference had made the point very openly explicitly cbi is a government department we cannot do anything against the wishes of the government now imagine the kind of money the kind of power the kind of political rivalry that goes on in states and the center and use of the cbi in this kind of scenario when the current director explicitly says we follow government's instructions to the letter this is one hour back on tv mm. now it's a deadly weapon you give mm. now the the fear is i agree entirely with the speaker that government wants to hide everything does not give any approval for 20 years till the man is dead everything is gone build into the law that within 2 months of approval is not given if approval is not given there has to be a speaking order why it's not given number 1 right. into the law secondly if it is not given but don't throw away that provision that is the surest way already the bureaucracy is not functioning at all the surest way to cripple it further right uh, a very quick reaction from uh, mr parida sir uh, we don't have much time right now briefly if you would do you think the political class the political leaders right now are trying to shrug off responsibility and blame it and keep it all at the bureaucracy's doorstep you see the political parties are political power in uh, in the administration or in our structure ruling sir structure they are so much now corrupt they lost their credibility and they are not in a position to control the bureaucracy also and bureaucracy has also become corrupt so now how unless the uh, political leadership is transparent is honest uh, and uh, Uh, and are responsible uh, uh, to the people uh, how can they control the bureaucracy how right. can they allow uh, the investigating authority to prosecute the right. uh, a corrupt uh, bureaucrat right. that is the problem now. i take your point sir i take your point i have about 1 minute left i want to give 30 seconds to mr dash and 30 seconds to mr kohli starting with mr kohli right now uh, the question is uh, the question nalin is this how does one really decide then and more importantly who gets to decide the government of the day the cbi say 5 years later if i retire as a government official and a project cleared by me is somehow seen as a dishonest act while at the time i took the decision in good faith that could actually defame and humiliate hard working decent patriots isn't that something that should be we should be concerned about well i'll finish it in less than 30 seconds athar what we need is an reverse an inverse of the current structure we need to just simply reward the honest and that's the only way it will be recognize honest work reward honest work punish the guilty immediately 
all other things will fall in place. Very well put, sir. Last word on the show too, Mr. Priyanjan. That's sir, your view on that. No, I'm glad that both Mr. Parida and Mr. Sori have pointed to the to the entire spectrum political leaders, as they call it, not just the leaders who are occupying the government today, but those who will come in tomorrow. The, the, uh, for the delay and th the state, the economy that we have, the problems that we have, we have to look at political logjam, which is a major reason. Today, you have 16.5, 16.5 lakh crore budget being passed without a discussion. Hmm. So that's the state of affairs. Right, I think that uh, is the accountability in uh, this system. I think you you put it very well as well, sir. Uh, I'll have to conclude the show right now. I'm completely out of time. I must thank all my guests first, Mr. Bashna Parida from the BJT. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Mr. T S R Subramanian. Many thanks for your inputs and insights as well, Mr. Priyanjan Dash as well as Mr. Nalin Kohli. Uh, uh, thank you all, gentlemen, for coming on the show. Of course, I think Nalin put it very succinctly when he said, "Reward the honest uh, and punish the guilty swiftly." That is that perhaps could be one of the first things we could start doing right. That's all the time we have on the Big Picture tonight. Atar Khan saying goodbye, goodnight for one last time. <laughs> Thank you for watching.